your presence here is a source of joy and comfort to the entire congregation. So again, thank you for being here today. Please make sure you check your weekly emails for the most updated information. Our session is meeting this Wednesday. So uh, at the end of this week, you will get another update, I'm sure, uh, from the session as to how things are progressing with the building. A special announcement, uh, I should say, change in your bulletin. You will see in the offertory, um, it says, Be Thou My Vision, I believe. And that is not the case this morning. We have a wonderful uh, special gift from Helen Tracy, who will be playing her flute. She will be playing a Shokin Farewell during the offertory. Really looking forward to that. So thank you, Helen, for playing your beautiful flute for us this morning. Today we continue to journey through Jesus' Bread of Life discord in the Gospel of John. This week we will hear how Jesus' own flesh and blood is the life-giving food that we all need. So now let us quiet our hearts and prepare our minds as we breathe in the Holy Spirit into our hearts and we listen to our prelude this morning. Please join me in our call to worship this morning based on Psalm 34. I will praise God in every moment and through every situation, through my words and my actions. God. Whenever the poor and humble hear of God's greatness, they will celebrate too. Come and lift up God's name with me. We praise God's name together. Please join me in our gathering hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, number 398 in the hymnal.
Jesus gave his entire life so that we would have life eternal. Yet we act as if we have no Savior. We hunger for more. Let us confess together how we have turned from God and seek forgiveness. God of healing and transformation, we hunger and thirst for your abundant life. We bring, bring you our sorrow and ask for the bread of joy. We bring you our despair and ask for the bread of hope. We bring you our weariness and ask for the bread of inspiration. Forgive us for turning to other sources to feed and nourish us. Lead us closer to you. Feed us with the life-giving food of Christ so that we can be a source of nourishment to others. We now take a few moments of silence for private individual confession. Amen. God knows our hearts and hears our honest confessions. We can begin anew. In Jesus Christ, we are indeed fed and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Beloved God, we pray this morning that we may experience that peace that passes all understanding, that we may experience you, the living peace of our world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Set free by God's grace, let us share God's peace with one another. Please be seated. As we prepare to hear God's word spoken and proclaimed, let us pray for illumination. Gracious God, we come to this sacred time and place where our hungers are finally and fully satisfied as only the living bread of Jesus, the Christ, can do. Open our hearts as we wait and listen for your leading in this hour. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is portrayed as a woman who invites, just as ordinary food is necessary for physical life, wisdom's food, insight, and understanding is necessary for fullness of life with God. Partaking of wisdom's banquet is the way to life. The reading is Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today's special music is called Sanctuary. And I wanted you all to know that this particular piece was selected before the tornado. Before we lost our sanctuary, our building where we could go for comfort and peace and to listen to beautiful music and to see pretty stained glass windows. But this, this song, it's a praise song. It's very repetitive. And what I love about it is every time you hear the chorus, you can get deeper into the message of the song. And what it talks about is the fact that because we have God's Holy Spirit within us, we can be a sanctuary for others. We can offer compassion and encouragement and beautiful music. So sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary for a with thanksgiving, a living sanctuary for It was beautiful. Thank you. In John's Gospel, the feeding of the in which Jesus identifies himself as the true bread of life. Finally, in these verses, he makes a connection that would not be understood until after his death. 
in light of the church's celebration of Holy Communion. John's Gospel includes no account of the institution of the Lord's Supper, but here we can't help hearing Jesus' words, we are all invited to share and be nourished. The reading is John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread, thanks be to God. I have a message for any children who want to come forward. Children of any age, doesn't matter, come on forward. I see you over there, Jay. I know you want to come up. Come on, let's go. <laughs> well, good morning. Thanks for coming up. We heard in our Bible readings today, Jesus says he's the bread of life. We are to follow Jesus, follow his example of love and kindness. We also need to have the wisdom to do that. Do you know what wisdom is? It's in your tooth. Okay, yeah, that's one kind of wisdom, yes. Being smart, right? Making the right choices, knowing when to make those right choices, right? So we, we, how do we know if we're following Jesus or we're not? Well, we hear in the book of Proverbs that Helen read today, talked about wisdom, helping us to make those choices, right? So I have a few things here food items that normally we like okay do we know what these are blueberries well how do we know they're blueberries what's that they're small right and they're blue right so they look like blueberries all right that's a good thing but now let's see what else do i have here no nope, these aren't them oh yes so how about these? Now, they're still on the branch, but these are small and these are blue. I'm sorry you have a bunch of those in your yard <laughs> because these are not blueberries. They're called ink berries, and they're weeds, and they grow very tall, sometimes 10 feet tall, and they will grow all over your yard, and it takes years to get rid of them. You have to dig them up. You don't want to eat these. But, you know, if I took them off of there, they would look very much like this, wouldn't they? And you might think that they're blueberries, but they're not. So we have to have wisdom, right, to discern, right, to figure out what are the good ones to eat and what aren't. I also have something that grew in my yard. Ooh, what's this? You know what that is? It's a mushroom, yeah. Does anybody here like to eat mushrooms? 
I never used to like them, and then all of a sudden one day I started liking them. Well, here's another mushroom. Now, how do we know which one, and there's all different kinds of mushroom. How do we know which one is edible and which one is not? Right, this one came from the supermarket. You're right. This one did not. But sometimes there are things in the supermarket that look like this. They're different kinds of mushrooms. They're not baby bell mushrooms. They may be another kind. And how do we know if we can eat them, right? We trust, right, that the supermarket would not sell us something that's poisonous, right? Into what I'm talking about with Jesus. We trust Jesus. We trust that Jesus is telling us the truth and that we can follow Jesus' ways because he wouldn't lead us astray. He wouldn't tell us things that are going to be harmful to us. And so that's what we have to remember today, to that use that wisdom from God to tell the difference, right, between right and wrong and which path to follow. I'm just like me. Some people can't have bread that has gluten in it, and it looks the same. We, again, have to trust that the package is correct. Have any of you had bagel bites? Bagel bites? No? These look like bagel bites, but they're really gummy bagel, bagel bites. And I bet you would like some of these, wouldn't you? You want to help, help pass some of these out? Everybody can have two of those because I have more here. And Jay is very excited that he came up. Says now he gets some gummy treats. You can just pick them out of there. Yep, turn them over. There you go. See, you figured that out. <laughs> you can take one or two. It's up to you. You can take one to share if you want. All right. All right, and I have some. I Here you are. Would you like one? If not, you can share that with someone. All right. Okay, and I have more here, so if anybody wants one when we're done, you see me after worship, and I'll give you some of these gummy Thank you. That we know you, we can trust you, and that you will never lead us astray. You will never lead us into harm. Help us to use that holy wisdom that you gave us so that we can always follow you and listen to your words. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Get up and eat. We heard these words last week, spoken by an angel to the prophet Elijah. He didn't want to go on anymore. He wanted his life to end. But God had plans for Elijah, and God has plans for us today. That's why we're spending so much time in this sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. Next week will be the culmination of a five-week series on Jesus' important Bread of Life discourse. By now you may be wondering why on earth Jesus had to say the same thing over and over again. Isn't once enough? Was he saying it because the first disciples didn't understand? Yes, that's part of it. But he also knew that we, his followers today, would have a hard time understanding it as well. Some things need to be repeated until we understand more clearly. It's like our song, that refrain, speaks to our hearts in a special way that if it was just sung once, it wouldn't have the same effect. It's like learning a new language. You have to hear the same words over and over again until eventually it becomes second nature. 
That's what Jesus wants. He wants us to be so fully connected to him that, and honestly, we are learning a new language. It's the language of discipleship. It's the language of divine love, justice, compassion, and grace. And that requires hearing Jesus' teachings over and over again, like this bread of life discourse. We're all hungry. We're all thirsty for so many things right now, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We're all experiencing so many challenges personally in our city and in our church family. We're still trying to navigate our way of being the church since the severe damage to our building caused by the tornado. On top of that, we've experienced some significant deaths in our congregation. It's a lot to bear. We want things to either go back to normal or like many of the ancient prophets, we don't want to do it anymore. We may just want to give up. Jesus cares about all these hungers in our lives. It's why he fed the crowd of over 5,000 with only five loaves and two small fish. It's why he gave his own life for us so that we would never hunger for a way to God. Grave so that we would have eternal life. He made a choice, his own life or that of the entire world. And Jesus chose the most difficult path of all, to save the world. That took divine love and divine wisdom. Now is the time for wisdom, as we heard in the reading from the book of the Pro Proverbs. Wisdom is a huge feast where there is always an abundance. The Holy Spirit is God's holy wisdom. And she indeed is inviting us all to feast on a banquet, the banquet of Jesus, the bread of life. This is exactly what Jesus is inviting all of us to do, to feast on him, to go thing we need. He is the living bread for the journey that we are on. We, the people of God, are on a journey not just to get back into our building, which will come in time, but more importantly, on a journey into the very heart of God, into Christ, who feeds and sustains us daily with what we truly need. And one of those things that guides us to make the right choices, like choosing the right foods that could lead to life or death, Choosing to continue to follow Jesus, no matter how hard life gets, always leads to life. It's wisdom that guides us to choose Jesus, the bread of life, who feeds us forever over other people or things which only feed us for a certain amount of time. Grace has no expiration date, and we need this bread of heaven in order to stay strong and have courage on our journey of faith. That's why Jesus spent so much time on giving this bread of life discourse and telling us over and over again that if we come to him, we will never be hungry or thirsty. He knows we need that divine sustenance each and every day. We need that daily bread in some cases, each and every hour. Some things just need to be repeated. The Holy Spirit calls us to repeat God's forgiveness and grace and compassion to others. We are called to repeat God's way of life, the way of love and peace that God has shown us through Jesus, the living immediately. It takes time. It's a repeated process of learning from our experiences, letting go of what is harmful, and making space 
where the yeast of wisdom can rise and grow, forming us and kneading us into the very bread of life that Jesus calls us to abide and feast on. This bread never goes stale and keeps on rising. And we at times, and in seasons like this, in the aftermath of the storm, may feel weary and punched down. But with this living bread within us, we keep rising again and again. And we rise best when we rise together. And so we continue, like Jesus, to feed those around us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. This is what we, the church, are called to do and be wherever we are. We do this day by day, step by step. Many 12-step programs have adopted what is known as the serenity prayer, attributed to the Lutheran theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. Let us pray it now. I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. May this be our collective prayer. May we repeat it often, today, tomorrow, and in the days to come, as we cling to Jesus, the true bread of heaven, who sustains us with his very life, so that we can do the same for others. Amen. Please join me in our reflection hymn, For the Bread Which You Have Broken, hymn number 341. Please join me affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Surrounded and fed by God's goodness, let us return to the work of Christ's church. <laughs> 